If you're looking to do some editing with your shiny new iPad, but not sure what to use, then stick around as in this video, I'll be counting down the top five raw editors for 2024, taking into account the latest feature additions and the latest knowledge I have of each app. These are the raw editors to spend your hard earned money and precious time to achieve standout images. Before we go onto the list, as always, let's run through the evaluation criteria which has been slightly updated for this year. In order of importance, with the first one being the most important, these are the criteria. The first one is tone adjustment performance. The iPad RAW editor's tone adjustments, which include basic adjustments like exposure, highlight, and shadows, should deliver visually pleasing results with naturally looking color and good contrast on par with its desktop counterpart. It should also exhibit excellent detail recovery, able to recover detail in even the darkest shadows and brightest highlights. The adjustments should also target the right tones. For example, the shadows adjustment should affect just the darkest areas of an image while leaving the mid-tones and brighter areas untouched. The second criteria is local adjustments capability. This has to do with the raw editor's ability to create precise masks easily and intuitively on even complex subjects. It should also support the Apple Pencil for precise brushing. The third criteria is the user interface. The interface should be fast, fluid, and easy to understand and specifically designed for the iPad. The fourth are other features. These covers tools, for example, AI tools or photo management features, which markedly enhance the overall editing experience. The fifth criteria are improvements in the past year. This is a new criteria which takes into account the achievements of the company to add core features and improve the overall editing experience in the past year. So with the criteria out of the way, let's run through the top five iPad raw editors. At number five is Affinity Photo for the iPad. Affinity has once again made the list this year because of its excellent tone adjustments, snappy user interface, and overall exceptional value. Its tone adjustments perform on par with its desktop counterpart and allows for excellent detail recovery in both shadows and highlights. It also has an excellent clarity slider, which works great in bringing out details and making an image pop. You can see its detail recovery performs exceptionally well, even in this extreme shot, which I intentionally underexposed by four stops to make sure the moon was not blown out. Affinity was still able to brighten the surroundings and balance the tones similar to what my eyes saw that night. In terms of local adjustments, Affinity supports both brush masking and linear gradient. As you can see, I can use the Apple Pencil to make a precise selection of the car in order to apply an exposure adjustment. So those are some advantages of Affinity. What about disadvantages? Affinity Photo is let down by a number of limitations that keep it from moving higher on the list. The first one has to do with its tone adjustments. While exhibiting good detail recovery, the adjustments decrease contrast and makes the colors look washed out, which does not look as visually pleasing as competitors. Secondly, it lacks core capabilities. For example, it is not possible to apply a clarity adjustment on a masked area the only editor on this list which cannot do this function, nor does it support any AI masking tools to speed up the workflow. Finally, and most importantly, Affinity Photo 2's raw editing for a second year in a row has not received any notable improvements or feature upgrades and remains largely the same as when it was launched two years ago in October 2022, a lifetime in this fast-paced world of photo editing. We're hoping the recent acquisition by Canva will be a catalyst for more rapid change. At number four is Photomator. Photomator falls down two notches because of improved competition and certain deficiencies in its processing which only came to light recently and will be elaborated more in a moment. But first, why is Photomator ranked at number four, higher than Affinity Photo? Photomator is ranked higher than Affinity Photo for a number of reasons. First, it has more visually pleasing adjustments. You can see here, both Photomator's shadow and highlights adjustment produce more pleasing color and better contrast 
compared to Affinity's more washed out results. Second, Photometer has significantly better masking tools over Affinity. Photometer supports AI masking, which allows for masking the car and the sky with one click, infinitely easier than the tedious brushing you would have to do with Affinity. Also, better than Affinity, Photometer supports color masks, which allows for targeting a particular color. In this case, I'm targeting the green of the foliage for a local clarity adjustment. Also, Photometer supports masking operations where you can add to or subtract from a mask with any other masking type, whether you created it via AI, brush, or some other tool. With so many capabilities of Photometer, why is it ranked only number four? Photometer is hampered by a number of core flaws which prevent it from being ranked higher, and some of its flaws I've only learned just recently when it was pointed out by one of our viewers. The first is its poor dynamic range in severely underexposed scenes. To demonstrate, let's edit this extremely underexposed photo I showed earlier. Let's brighten the shadows in the image. As you can see, as I try to increase the exposure, Photometer is unable to do so in an adequate way, which is the only raw editor on this list not able to perform this basic task. Its shadows adjustment is also equally as bad in severely dark scenes. The second issue with Photometer is something I've learned about only recently when it was pointed out by a viewer. The issue is Photometer, when brightening severely dark shadows, tends to apply some sort of denoising or blurring process which makes the underlying area look soft and overly smudged, lacking details. You can see this more clearly with a side-by-side -side comparison. Finally, Photometer for the iPad, just like Affinity Photo, didn't receive any notable improvement or feature upgrades during the past year, which leaves it further behind its competition in the fast-moving world of photo editing. Only time will tell whether Apple's recent acquisition will accelerate its innovation. At number three is Capture One for the iPad. Why is Capture One ahead of Photometer? Capture One is ahead of Photometer because of the quality of its tone adjustments, which unlike Photometer, can handle severe underexposure, as you can see here. Capture One also boasts the best shadow recovery in raw editing, where its shadows and black sliders can properly expose even the darkest scenes without the help of other sliders. Just like Photometer, Capture One's shadows and highlights adjustments target the correct tones, but better than Photometer, Capture One does not apply an ill-conceived denoising or blurring operation, producing sharper, more detailed results. In terms of newly added features, just this past October, Capture One upgraded its mobile app in a big way by introducing all new layers and masks. Capture One now supports brush masking via the Apple Pencil and also supports the ability to add a linear gradient, which is great to tone down overly bright skies. So those are some nice features from Capture One. Why is it only at number three? Capture One is limited to number three for a variety of reasons. First, unlike its higher ranked competitors, Capture One does not support AI masking no sky, subject, or object masking. Also, Capture One's brush masking, in my view, is the worst implemented in this list. It features a tedious workflow, which, as I've discussed in my previous review, requires you to repeatedly press the add or subtract button whenever you lift the Apple Pencil or your finger during the brushing process. Capture One's brush masking is also the laggiest performer in this list, and the most buggy. As of my last usage, I could not refine the gradient mask with a brush mask, something I could do when I last tested Capture One. To be fair, Capture One says it is working on these problems and a fix is forthcoming. At number two is Photoshop Express. Just like Capture One, Photoshop Express allows for excellent dynamic range. As you can see, it had no problems brightening the severely underexposed image without blowing out the beautiful color and detail in the moon. As you would expect of an Adobe product, its shadows and highlights adjustments work well to target the right tones and produce visually pleasing results. 
The standout adjustment has to be its highlights adjustment, which was the best in recovering detail in the overexposed sky. Better than Capture One, Express supports a variety of AI masking tools. It auto-detects all objects in the image, and with just one tap, I can automatically mask the car to increase its exposure or the sky to lower the exposure and apply a dehaze adjustment. Express also supports a type of object selection called Smart Cut, which allows me to select faster by repeatedly dragging a rectangle around the objects. In short, Express masking tools is a big advantage over Capture One when it comes to the editing experience. In terms of recent improvements, in 2024, Adobe upgraded Express to include powerful generative AI tools. Unfortunately though, those upgrades were limited to just the iPhone app and not available for the iPad. And that brings us to the number one iPad RAW editor for 2024, and it is no surprise, it is Lightroom Mobile. What makes Lightroom Mobile number one? It is actually interesting to note that Lightroom Mobile features practically the same comprehensive toolset and excellent adjustment performance as Photoshop Express and produces equivalent results, as you can see here. So what makes Lightroom stand out? What makes Lightroom Mobile stand out over Express and every other app on this list is the quality of its masking. The difference can be clearly seen when masking more complex subjects, such as those with hair or fur. As you can see here, Lightroom's masking is far more accurate and far less error prone than its competitors. Also, better than its competitors, except for Photometer, Lightroom supports masking operations, the ability to add or subtract masks from any masking tool to better fit an object. In terms of new improvements, in 2024, Lightroom once again distanced itself from the competition by integrating generative erase, which enables you to remove large or complex distractions, usually impossible for traditional clone or healing tools. In terms of other advantages, Lightroom includes a more intuitive interface, wherein you can see multiple sliders as opposed to just one at a time with Express. It also supports useful tools like portrait bokeh and the ability to import photos from iCloud Drive, which Photoshop Express lacks. So Adobe Lightroom Mobile retains its crown as the best iPad app for 2024. Congratulations to Adobe. Let me know if you agree or disagree with these results. Write it down in the comments. And let me know what is your favorite iPad app to use for your editing. I'd love to hear from you. And if you like this content, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share to help keep the videos coming. Until the next video, I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye for now.